a wide-body aircraft took to the skies around 50 years ago, with the goal of being the most advanced plane in the world. Lockheed L-1011 TriStar was a plane with the most advanced technology and it was ahead of its time. This plane could even land itself. Unfortunately, a series of events led to the plane going down to flames and being marked as a commercial failure. In the 1960s, airlines were looking for an aircraft that can fly a greater number of people, as flying was afforded by many. American Airlines was looking for an aircraft which could be manufactured but should be larger than a narrow body. The manufacturers at that time were Lockheed, Douglas, and Boeing. It was said that Boeing was manufacturing 737 and 747, so Douglas and Lockheed were left with the challenge. It was a big challenge for Lockheed. They hadn't built an airliner since L-188, which was years prior. But Douglas was already producing passenger jets like the DC-8 and DC-9. However, Lockheed decided to challenge themselves and manufacture a commercial aircraft and take over the market. They were planning to build a plane that's advanced in technology and way ahead of its time. Both manufacturers had a different strategy for creating the demanded wide-body aircraft. Douglas was aiming to get their DC-10 to the skies with specific budget. Going over the budget was not acceptable, even if it meant that there are design errors. Those imperfections in the design of the DC-10 led to one of the deadliest crashes in the aviation industry, which was the Turkish Airline Flight 981. The crash occurred because the design of the cargo door showed that it was properly sealed, when in reality it wasn't, leading to the crash. Lockheed's strategy was unlike Douglas. Cost was not an issue. They were determined to create a unique jet. They wanted to build a plane that was so advanced in technology to a point that they were ready to create a new technology if needed, to create this masterpiece. Initially, L-1011 was intended to be a wide-body twin jet. However, two engines were going to limit the aircraft's performance. Hence, the FAA allowed the use of three engines for Lockheed. One way that Lockheed was different from its competition was the fuselage. Lockheed made use of the metal-to-metal -metal bonding of the fuselage. Another feature was the flight deck. The plane was known for its advanced bespoke avionics. It had vast controls inside the deck, like the speed control systems, stability augmentation system, and much more. Those amazing advanced technologies made the L-1011 TriStar to be the first wide body to land by itself. The plane had crazy cabin innovations. The passengers on board could notice that the windows are glare resistant. There were also full-size closets for jackets. The food would make its way to the cabin with elevators. This was very different than all planes at that time. It was a new experience for the passengers as well as the crew members. On the 25th of May 1972, test pilots and 115 crew members went on a four-hour flight from California to Washington, using the AFCS feature from takeoff to landing, without the need of human intervention. This was a groundbreaking moment for everyone. It means that new technologies can be trusted. There were many fans for the L-1011 during its production. TWA stated that it's one of the safest planes in the world. Delta Airlines was one of the biggest customers to L-1011. And many other airlines were purchasing it as well. Delta ordered many planes from the manufacturer. They were determined to try new advanced automated navigation systems. Now, a lot of y'all might be thinking, why did this plane fail commercially when it was perfect in every aspect? The manufacturing of the engines was the reason why Lockheed failed. Lockheed chose Rolls-Royce to power the plane. Rolls-Royce chose a very complex design than their competitor, in order for the engine to be quiet and very economical compared to their competitor DC-10. However, Rolls-Royce spent a lot of money when developing the engine that they needed financial help and asked for receivership in 1971. By the time the company received the money to complete manufacturing, Lockheed already finalized the design and the engine space was only designed to fit the Rolls-Royce engine. Since fitting another engine would be impossible, Lockheed had no other choice but to stick to the plan. DC-10 and L-1011 both had very close launching schedules. However, the delay in the engine slowed the development of the plane by two years. This allowed DC-10 to enter service first, which was a year ahead of L-1011. American Airlines, which was the initial customer, ended up purchasing planes from DC-10, and only Eastern Airlines was the airliner to launch Lockheed. Douglas has already been a year in the market, now Lockheed had to catch up with an airliner that had been on sale for a year. Lockheed made huge losses and lost crucial revenues. This eventually led to the project failing. The manufacturer ended up selling just 250 planes, but for the project to keep going and for it to be profitable, they had to sell at least 500 units, which unfortunately didn't happen. DC-10, the competitor, ended up getting wiped out as well in the following decade by Boeing. Even though Lockheed L-1011 TriStar was marked as a failure, till this day, which, 50 years after TriStar, is remembered to be one of the most advanced airliners ever created. This is the end of today's video. Do you think that L-1011 should make its comeback? Share with us in the comments section below. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn the post notifications on to receive the latest from us. See you in the next one.